Buongiorno. How are we all? Good, I hope. My printer here, which is sitting nicely behind me in a new location. More on that later. I bought it 27th of April and it's five months ago now, nearly. We're about halfway through September already. Can you believe it? Anyway, it dawned on me that it might be quite nice to just do a little pros and cons video on the printer, what my thoughts of it are. For anyone that's currently looking at buying the ET8550 Epson, this might be of interest to you. And I did do a video when I got the printer, an unboxing video. So literally from start to finish, going through the instructions, setting it all up and filling up the ink here. So if that's also something of interest, then I will try and leave it somewhere on the screen. I see that people do that. I don't know how, but I'll try. And if not, I will leave it at the end of the video so you can have a little look at that video if you would like to. But for now, for today's video, this is just going to be my thoughts on it, really, five months in and the pros and cons. First things first, the printer is a lovely looking printer, actually. And the size of it, when it's all compact and as it is currently here, is lovely. It's a really nice compact little printer, but don't let that fool you <laughs> because it actually requires quite a lot of room. So that's something that if you're thinking of buying this printer, you really do need to take into account. This is why my printer has moved location from where I currently had it, uh, previously had it set up. And also one of the reasons that I moved the printer was due to a comment that I had on one of my other videos explaining that really I should have moved it to enable it to perform properly. So that also was a reason I moved the printer and actually it's, it is much better in this position anyway. But I will show you why it needs so much room because it goes from this nice little space here, all compact and lovely, to this. Right, so let's turn the printer on just press the button, the white light appears. It takes a second or two for the screen to come on. And this is a touch screen. So you just literally swipe up left or right and press, depending on what you what option you want if you're using these. Now to show you one of the reasons why you need a certain amount of space for this printer, I'm gonna get the printer to do a nozzle check. I've already got paper in there. Uh, so using the touch screen, I just scroll across so it says maintenance and then click that and then press print head nozzle check. And then I shall press print. And if you watch the bottom of the printer here, you will see an output tray comes out. The output tray, because the printer is currently printing on A4 paper, the output tray has come that far. If it was going to print on A4, it would extend even further. So you also need to take that into account if you print on A3 paper. So already our space needed has increased and that's just for the output tray. And the nozzle checks printed and everything's fine. And as you can see, the colours are all lovely and vivid and vibrant and bright. So yeah, really good. So that's nozzle check completed and you've seen the output tray. I will just tell the printer that everything is fine. And what I have got into a good habit of doing now is shutting the output tray. So there's a little button just here in the corner of the screen saying output tray. And if you click that, the output tray goes back in again. The reason I do that now once I've finished printing is that I have forgotten that it's there sometimes when I'm busy working at my desk and I've knocked it. And obviously I don't want to be breaking it. So yeah, it's quite a good practice when you finish printing to close the output tray, which you then you need to do manually. So yes, that's the first thing. Remember the output tray size has already gone from, from this to about this. In fact, we'll probably try and measure the actual full area of space that this requires uh, once we've finished doing all of this part of the video. So I mentioned earlier that um, I had a comment in one of my other videos, which also prompted me to move my printer into this area. And the reason for that was with regards the paper feeding tray. Now, I used to print my A4 pictures. I used to just open the back up, pop this in like this and print because I didn't really take into account that the printer needed much uh, support just to do a piece of A4 paper. But apparently the ideal practice for this printer is to actually set the paper feeder tray up regardless. 
So I move the printer here and I just need to, when I'm printing, I just pull my printer out as such. And there's a rear paper feeder tray at the back here, which pulls up and tilts back. So that is the second reason why you need to have more space than you initially think for this printer. So I'll pull that out now and show you what that involves. This bit here just literally pulls out. It can be a little bit stiff sometimes, I do find. It tilts back and then it goes up. So again, it requires space. The space from the edge of the printer here to the wall. So it's a good, that much space required. And so yes, so now when I put my paper in, it is supported by the paper tray. We'll do another print nozzle check just to get the output tray out. So yeah, so it's not, now the output tray is not far off the edge of my desk. So hopefully you can see how much room this is requiring. If that had been the A3 extension, it would be out beyond my desk now. Well, we're at least level with it, I would say. So I think I'll get a tape measure and just measure the actual space that we've got here that's being used. So I couldn't find a tape measure, but I do have one of these. And it's coming out so far approximately 27 there so 27 inches 27 inches from the wall where the paper feeder tray finishes to where the output tray currently is and obviously it's going to be another inch or two with the a3 extender so that's quite a chunk of room if you bear in mind where the printer was sitting when we first started this when everything was shut down it was all compact and lovely it's now taking up the whole of my desk that's something you do need to bear in mind when it comes to where you are going to be putting your printer. Do you have the space for it? So in terms of pros or cons, I suppose if you have a lot of room and you're able to house the printer appropriately, then that's got to be a pro, isn't it? So if you haven't, then that's going to be a con. <laughs> so as far as whether this the size of this printer when it's all up and running is a pro or a con depends very much on your space. For me, uh, this works well, so it is fine. Another pro with the printer. Admittedly, it didn't make much of a difference to me because I already have a separate one. But if we lift this up here, the printer has a built in scanner. It's only for it's slightly bigger than A4, not A3, even though the printer prints in A3, which is something else I should have mentioned. It prints A3 size. Uh, the scanner is not A3. But nonetheless, it will scan sort of documents you may have and so forth. And if you need to print bigger, then you could probably scan a bigger picture in parts and then use some software to stitch it together. Always ways around things, I find. So, yes, if a scanner is something that you would be useful to you, then this printer has one. So that is obviously another pro, which I really should mention. We're going to move on to the printing quality of this machine there's two settings you can print in high or you can print in standard and i've printed in both and i'm going to do it now so that you can see the difference in the two options for me the print quality of this machine is absolutely fantastic i am so happy with it previously to this model i had the epson scp 600 and again fantastic machine it really printed well the difference between these two was that the PC600 was nine inks and they were all pigment. This one is six inks and five of them are dye based ink, which we'll talk about a bit later. But for the between the two, I have to say. I prefer the prints on this printer and I don't know if that's because of the different inks, I'm not sure, but the other printer, the P600, I had for years and it did me brilliantly and I loved the quality of the prints. If it was still up and running, I wouldn't be looking to change it because the print quality was fantastic on that machine. I just prefer them on this. There's just some slight, I don't know if it, I don't know if they're a little bit crisper, but I just, when I look at them, I prefer the print on this, but there's, it's very fine margins. If I just had to pick between the two, I would choose this one for its print quality. So let's get some prints going. I'm going to print one in high and one in standard and we'll look at the two together. As you can see, I've got two options. I've got standard and I've got high. There are custom settings. Uh, I don't use them. 
so I cannot tell you anything about those. I literally just stick with these two. So we'll do the first one. I print it on Epson matte paper because that's what the closest to what I'm using. Uh, the paper I'm using isn't Epson, it's Marat, but it's a fantastic quality of paper and I'm very happy with it. And so we will just select print and run that off. What I use, as I mentioned, is this and I think it's really good. It's a brilliant quality of paper and I love it. I've been using it for years, so more than happy with that. Now this is printed out, so this is it in high... What was it? You can't go with high standard because the other option is standard. So this is this is it setting as a high. And that's the colour. Really, really good. Colours are fantastic. Quality is fantastic. And there we are. So I'll just pop that in there. Exactly the same image. I'm just going to select the standard option and press print. Output tray is already out, so that's we know that, but I'm having to be careful and aware of it. So that's why I was mentioning that to you earlier. Obviously, you might not have your desk set up so close to your printer, so it won't be an issue. So, yes, I did a manar about the inks for a long time, whether I should stick with the pigment or whether I should go with the dye based. And in terms of the expense of the machine, there wasn't a lot in it. The Epson SCP600, I don't even think that's available anymore because it's quite an old machine, but I paid about £800 for it, I believe, when I did buy it. I paid 689 I think, for the 8550, which is obviously cheaper, but still a very expensive piece of kit. So I did think long and hard before purchasing this printer and really did weigh up the fact that it's dye-based ink. I say it's dye-based, five of the inks are dye-based and there's one pigment ink in there. Now, I don't know if you heard that, but it was beeping at me and it was telling me there's a paper jam and it has done that to me a few times. There's absolutely no paper jam in this machine, but for some reason it tells me there's a paper jam and I think it's just simply because this hasn't been loaded properly. Sometimes I just, I just like to tap it a couple of times to make sure it is actually on the bottom of the guide there or whatever's at the bottom just to make sure it is set properly. So yes, uh, with regards to the inks, that's just something you have to bear in mind depending how you sell your artwork, if in fact you do. Now, hopefully you can hear that this is printing much quicker than it did when we were with the high setting. In fact, it's already, make, already making an appearance. Should have timed them really, should have timed how long each one took, but you can see for yourself. almost there so hopefully this is showing you that the standard setting is quite a bit quicker than the height setting and there it's done so i will now show you this one and there's the image and the quality this is the standard one and this still holding on to the standard one is the high different the high one so i will leave it up to you now as to whether or not you can see much of a difference If I try and put the exact there, there we are. This one, the high, is ever so slightly crispier than this one here. I think this stands out a bit more. But in terms of the actual colour, still fantastic. So, even though this is the standard one here, I don't think there's an awful lot in it. If I come close without it hopefully going blurry. If I look at this rock and the other rock, this one isn't quite as clear to me as it is on this sheet here. But I'm being picky. So there we are. For me, all my art prints, I produce as high still. People ask and they want to know, I can sort of say that they should survive for about 50 years. I still like to know that I am doing my each print to the highest standard that I can do. So I always print my art prints in high. When I'm printing my stickers and such, things that are just not supposed to last a life, uh, well, no, I can't say lifetime now, but they're not supposed to really last forever and ever and ever, which is the same as lifetime. So I don't know why I said that. You know what I'm trying to say. For things, the stickers that literally cost a few pence by comparison, I use the standard now because they're just the, the print quality on standard is just very very good in my opinion 
So we've tackled the actual print quality of the machine, which I think is fantastic. I've shown you the space that you're going to need if you're going to purchase this item. What else can I talk about? Oh, the actual ink levels. I have actually refilled this. I bought it on the 27th of April and the inks didn't run, run out at all, but the Scion uh, ink did get very low and it was the first one that was noticeably lower than the others. So I decided to top them all up. I wish I'd sort of been able to take a, uh, take a note of how many prints I'd actually made on the printer, but I didn't. I will tell you that I've done an awful lot of printing. This isn't really a uh, printer that's made for bulk printing, but that's exactly what I do on it because I have got my art business and I am now at the market if you've watched any of my previous videos and I had to make an awful lot of stock for that and it involved hundreds and hundreds of prints. On the box and on all the blurb it suggests that you get, in fact I can tell you I've got the box, 2,000, 2,300 prints. I'm not convinced that I had anywhere near that amount of prints out of the machine before I topped it up and remember I didn't run all the inks down to the to the lowest but the Scion got to a point where I did need to refill that one so I figured I'd refill the rest. Obviously if I had allowed the Sion to run out, the other ink, especially the black, still had quite an amount in it but I would no longer have been able to print anyway. But yeah, I've definitely not got anywhere near 2,300. If I had been printing all of them as standard, perhaps the figure would have been double that. I don't know. But of course, you know, I won't be printing everything on standard because like I've just said, I, I want the quality of my art prints to be the best they can be. So I can't really comment on that side of things. Epson say you can get 2,300 prints, so I'm not going to argue with them. I don't think that's been my experience as yet. I am going to show you quickly how to top up these inks because I might as well just quickly show you how you go about doing that and just top them all back up because I have got a little bit of ink left. The inks come in bottles and if you if you are interested in a more in-depth look at all of this, it is in that previous video that I told you about, but they come in bottles as opposed to cartridges and it is super easy to do. you just got to make sure you put the right bottle in the right chamber then. But um, yeah, all you do is you lift the lid up, lift this unit up and then lift the lid here. Find the relevant bottle. My black is still pretty high and so is my PB because as I said, I filled them up recently. I'll pop the Sion on. It doesn't need an awful lot, but you can then see how you go about it. You take the lid off. You open the chamber, make sure it's the correct one. And then you simply put the bottle onto the unit like that. And it is scary the first time, but there is nothing to be worried about because it's all automatic. It's brilliant. You put the bottle on and the ink will come, will go into the chamber, but it stops all by itself. And once the ink stops flowing, you know that it's filled up and you just simply take your lid off, put your lid back on. Jobs are good at. And you just close everything back down, bring this down. When you have refilled it, it comes up with a screen and you just literally tap to say you've filled these up. And then proceed. Is the ink yes? Okay. So that's the inks all filled and that's how easy it is. It literally couldn't be easier. The printer does most of the hard work for you. In terms of filling up your inks, I'd say that's a pro because it's very simple to do. The cost of the inks. Now, when I had my Epson SCP600, I can't honestly remember how much that cost, but there was nine inks, of course, but it was a lot of money. I bought that set that I've just shown you of six inks for this printer for £85.80. Now, bearing in mind, it supposedly does 2,300 prints. I'm yet to be convinced of that, but it does an awful lot of prints, <laughs> huge amount of prints before it needs refilling. I don't think that's bad. So in terms of pros and cons, for me, the cost of the inks for this machine compared with the number of prints I get from it, I think £85 ATP is very good. So for me, currently, the space issue is a pro in so much as I have got the space to use this machine. At the moment, it's a pro. I will show you one slight flaw in the pro there, but that's to come. 
the ink is a definite pro the print quality is an absolute pro it's fantastic and i am absolutely cannot say it enough thrilled to bits with the print quality of this machine i am very very happy to be selling art prints as i do and the quality of the art prints then so that's all pros now as far as my art prints go this is all it needs this is the space it needs i press print everything comes out easy peasy lemon squeezy so all good let's get to the cons just while i'm thinking about it because i have found a con with my printer now i have mentioned this in previous videos i will say right now i haven't contacted epson about this problem as yet i'm not dismissing epson i'm not suggesting you don't buy the printer for this reason i'm just saying it's literally just my experiences with this printer do your own research on this see if you can find other people that have had this problem and i know they're out there because i found them and if this is enough to put you off buying it well then absolutely that's your decision to make i have this problem because of what i use this printer for it hasn't put me off. I'm not regretting buying this printer because for me, the ink costs and the print quality is fantastic. And I would, for that reason, buy this printer again. What is the problem I found with the printer? Well, for me, printing on thicker paper or cardstock has left roller marks. I know not everybody's had them. But what I am going to do, just so that I'm being completely transparent on my experiences with my printer, I'm going to print something now onto a piece of card that I was using to show you the issue I had. I have got different sample papers of different thicknesses from the same company that I buy my art print paper from. So we're going to test those as well to see if, in fact, it's purely a paper issue or whether this keeps happening on all of the papers that we're going to be putting through in a minute. Yes, I absolutely need to buy a sample pack from Epson and test their very own papers to see if the issue also is on their paper. And a lot of people have said that I should be using Epson paper and then I won't have the issue that we're going to discuss. However, if Epson was a brand that made printers that only work 100% well with their own papers, that alone would put me off buying the printer. I don't feel like I should be forced into having to use Epson paper in order to use this printer that's just something that would grate with me so yes i need to test the sample papers from epson to see if this fault still is present but i also don't feel that i should have to because the papers that i use for my art prints especially let's, let's say i don't use cheap papers to produce cheap prints so that i can get a higher profit i tr i choose good quality papers for those and like cardstock and stuff i was making greetings card which is where the problem arose i didn't just buy naff paper so if it becomes that only epson papers work with this printer well then that, that would be something that would that would annoy me a little bit because I don't think you should spend this amount of pay amount of money on a product and then only be able to use that brand's papers to be able to do a job well. What am I talking about here? Well, I started making some greeting cards back along just just to, just to create an extra little product that I could do, and I was using a you know a card stock for it, which wasn't cheap cheap, but it wasn't the most expensive, and it was a perfectly good one. It's a brand that other people use. I printed my cards and I did it through here, the rear paper feeder, and it came out with roller indentation marks on either side. So that became an issue for me, but it wasn't just a one off. It kept happening. It kept happening. I tried a few different papers. Same thing applied. This was if I printed anything over, if I printed 300 GSM, I had the problem. There was a different brand of paper I used that was 280. Same problem arose. Now, I did look up on Epson's site what this could handle the rear paper feeder and it said anything up to 300 gsm should be able to go through the rear paper feeder so for me and i know that gsm doesn't necessarily tell you the thickness of the card but a lot of companies don't sell you card based on the thickness of the card uh, that's been my experience it's sold as in the gsm so for me purchasing 280 i just assumed that would definitely go through here perhaps the 300 was too much for it and that's absolutely fine but 280 still had the roller marks 
So I'm going to print one now just so I can show you what it is I'm talking about and then we'll discuss it a little bit further because there is a solution around it. It's just it's a bit of an annoying one. Well, it's not annoying to me anymore. It's just a bit of a faff then, shall we say, and it is another reason why you have to have a serious amount of space for this printer. So let's get on with that. I'll print a greeting card and I'll show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. So hopefully what I'm talking about suddenly will make sense to you. Paper cuts. Now, I know this is not the most expensive paper in the world, but it's not the cheapest either. And a lot of artists slash crafters use it. I've watched the videos it's where I got the recommendation for. So they use it on printers that are sometimes cheap, much cheaper than the one I'm using. So, you know, it went without saying that I'd get it and try it and just assumed it would be fine. Now, this is 300 GSM. And I, as I said before, I did find um, information through Epson to state it will print up to 300 GSM through the rear paper feeder. So I'm going to try it anyway, just to show you. And I've also got a photo paper, which is 260, but this is gloss. So I'm going to print a greeting card on both of them. I've got a sample pack from Marit, which I'll find, and we'll also do some printing on that as well. Print it as standard, because this is just experimental anyway. And then after that, I am going to do 260 GSM, a glossy sort of paper, which again, doesn't really have much thickness to it. I'll pop that there a minute. This is the 300 GSM printing here. And then I'm just going to put in the 260 as well and do the same thing again. <clears throat> They've both printed. Now, I've got to try and show you here what the problem is. So I'll try and do it here. I don't know if it's going to show up. I've got the glossy one, as you can see, and we've got the thicker one. That line running through. And the same, that's the 260, and the same is true on the 360. There, can you see the line running through? One there and one there. So that's my issue that I've got with the printer. Yes, the 300 GSM is really printing right on the border of what is recommended through the rear paper feeder. So I can accept that. But the 260 GSM, which really isn't thick at all. I mean, you can see there's no thickness there. The roller marks are being left on there. If greeting cards was my business, and certainly if I was doing personalised ones, which I was doing back near a father's day, that's print on demand, really. You can't bulk make them or what have you. So you just want to be able to get an order in, send it to the printer, job's good, and then post it off. If that was my business on, and I was using this, you know, quite good paper here, 260 GSM, I wouldn't be able to do it because of the roller marks. Ultimately, when you're in a small business and you're working for yourself and you're working from home, whatever the situation is, everything you try and do is to make you the most efficient you can be. My way around it, well, I'll show you a couple of things. My current way around it is if I'm gonna to continue to do the greetings cards, then I just won't make them personalized and I'll get, I'll outsource them and get them printed for me because for me, the, like I've said many times, the print quality for my art prints is for me exceptional. It's brilliant. Um, so I, on that basis, I'm happy with the printer for what I'm going to be using it for. The fact that I can't or won't be printing greetings cards by myself now isn't too much of an issue. But if it had been my business, sole business was all greetings cards, then we would probably have run into a bit of an issue here. I'm going to find this sample pack and then we're going to try a much better quality of paper than these two are and see if, in fact, the paper makes a difference because it's something I haven't tried yet. So let's do it together. So I've got the Marit sample paper and I've got two sets. We've got this one, which has got a 280 GSM traditional Barita high white in it. That one there, which we're going to try first. And then I've also got this sample pack as well, which has got a 265 GSM Pro Photo Satin Slash Oyster and a 250 GSM Smooth Luster DS. So we'll try both of those as well, because why not indeed? Let's just put it to the test. So it's printing now onto the 280 card stock. Um, Whilst it's doing that, I will just say that I've obviously done a lot of research on these roller marks that I've had with the printer. And I definitely am not the only one 
that's had this problem. I've also had quite a few people in the comments suggest various fixes, one of which was a man who said that I wasn't using my paper guide feeder properly. And obviously the paper was going in, so I wasn't using it. The paper was going in, it couldn't be picked up correctly, putting too much pressure on something or other, and that was probably causing the marks or could be responsible or helping. And that was one of the reasons why I moved it. As you saw, the paper now goes through the paper guide all set up in place so there's no pressure on the paper and the exact same problem still occurs. Many other people suggested I look at Keith Cooper's video and I will reference that in a minute because he released a video about four months ago suggesting there was an update from Epson to correct the issue with roller marks. Now any updates I've had I've done he did suggest that the update was rolling out. It could be that I've not received that update yet. And I've checked again this morning and there is still no more updates to be had. I can't understand how an update would fix the problem. For me, it's almost like something in the mechanism is too tight or whatever. I don't know how these things work, but it's almost like the paper, whatever rolls the paper through is gripping onto the paper too tightly. So anything with over a certain thickness is being picked up and push too tightly to keep it in place maybe I don't know I'm not an expert it's just my brain trying to understand what's going on if that's the case I don't really know how an update would solve that but apparently there is something and a couple of people have said that it has helped in their situation so whether I'll get that update and it will solve this problem and in which case everything will be absolutely fantastic as yet I haven't had the update. There's other people that say they've got the same problem as me and if they leave the print alone for a few weeks the indentations disappear so obviously the paper bounces back or what have you. Again lovely but if you are someone with a greeting cards business, you can't literally ask people to send you their orders three weeks, three or four weeks in advance so that you know the indentations will have popped out by the time you need to post it and they need it because that would just be ridiculous. Right, this is 280 GSM and that is a lovely print actually, there's a certain sheen to that, but we do have the roller marks. They're very faint, I'm going to try and my best to show you there. So we've got that one running all along there and we have that one running up there. But I'll tell you what, look at the sheen on that. That is lovely. Cool. I really like the way that's printed. Being if I decided I wanted to start using this paper, which I would be very tempted to do, I can't because of the roller marks that are left in it. So frustrating. Let's try this 265 Pro Saturn, see how that gets on print. I am actually going to leave this one a good few weeks and see if those lines do come out because I really like how that looks on this paper. I would be really tempted to start printing all my prints on that, it looks beautiful. Oh, anyway, for any of you that do make art prints and you don't have problems with roller marks, if you don't already know about Marat, you should definitely check them out because, honestly, the papers are fantastic. Anyway, let's see how this one goes. Right, so Keith Cooper, as I was saying, I will bring the video up. Now, that printer has, for some people, had problems with roller marks on papers. So he's just saying that the, this printer, for some people, has a problem with roller marks. Uh, this refers to the... 8550. So referring and to the 8550. And that there's some new firmware, firmware available. The so he's saying about the firmware update um, that has, has, has helped some people. But if you then look in the comments, so I'll pause that a minute and then read the, the comments. Someone did say in there that four months ago, so several weeks ago, I printed a series of photos using this particular paper, which I assume is a very good one. Use the rear paper feeder. All the prints had minor roller marks visible at oblique angles immediately after printing. Today, several weeks later, I re-examined all the prints and the roller marks are not visible. It would seem the paper bounces back and the impressions disappear as a result. Again, I wish the roller marks weren't there on these thicker papers, but in the case of this particular paper, at least there's some comfort knowing the prints sort of write themselves. So that's what I was saying just now. Some people who are getting the marks find that the paper bounces back 
Someone else, thanks for the update, Keith. I just bought one this week and noticed it on a couple of papers. Someone else says, I have experienced roller marks, mostly on papers with more delicate surfaces. It seems worse when using the front feeder. Someone absolutely had this problem, did the update, probably printed about 20 of the same pictures and it worked. Amazing at how update to firmware could fix roller marks. And yeah, I don't understand how that can be the case, but obviously worked in there for them. Someone else, a few weeks ago, I printed many cards on matte paper. Today, I noticed roller marks on one of these cards printed with a large portion of black. So I made a Keith Cooper search and found this one. I checked if my printer was updated and it was, so I printed the same card. The result, the roller marks are not noticeable, only if I look at it on a really narrow angle by the window. So the updates work for somebody else. Someone else has put, I loved this printer until the day I tested thicker papers. Huh markings on most almost every paper which is thicker than 0.3 millimeters unfortunately marks spoil everything someone said have you tried the thicker paper setting for that and they said yes i've tried it it doesn't affect paper feeding so marks are the same with these settings i will add that i have also tried the thick card option and it made no difference whatsoever so that's just really to highlight that i am definitely not the only one that has had this problem and yes I should have contacted Epson by now and I still will as you know I'm getting all these printouts so I can send photos as evidence it's definitely not just me having this issue and it's not something that I am doing wrong oh so, let's have a look at the 260 uh 265 and that has printed really nicely so there are no roller marks on that one at all and it's got a lovely lovely sheen to it now just out of interest we will try one more got a 250 double smooth luster double sided so we'll just give that one a quick try 250 smooth luster so let's try that i'm also just intrigued to see what it actually looks like now because these are turning out to be really lovely prints which i knew they would because i really like this company's paper these ones back in here because they are no good they, we can't use those they're over 300 gsm anyway which is a shame we can't print over 300 in my scp 600 printer i didn't have to really worry about it 300 was fine so it's a shame because some of these papers look really nice and if i wanted to use them well i could and i'll show you how in a minute but it would be an pain to do so i would say that you wouldn't use these papers here for cards greeting cards i mean you can but it's expensive paper so you'd have to charge a fair bit for your greeting card and i don't know that people would be prepared to pay for it i mean that's the other problem you know you buy an expensive epson printer and if you want to make greetings cards with it you can only work within your means so people aren't spending huge amounts of money anymore and you've got all the competition out there you know there's people out there that produce cards now for 50p which is ridiculous and i don't see how on earth they possibly you go to a shop this is what i'm on about you go to a shop and pick up a greeting card for 50p well obviously they're made in bulk because there's no way you could possibly compete with that so the most you're looking at really if you want to have a good business is charging sort of between one and 199 maybe three quid for a greetings card if it's handmade and um like in a crafting sort of a world maybe more but in order to make any sort of profit off of that you obviously need to keep your expenses down so you can't be using like the most expensive sort of papers to make greetings cards and expect to make a massive profit margin and hence a living from it i wouldn't have thought right this one has printed absolutely fine Ooh, exciting so that one's printed really well so i've got two options of i really like this one that's got the roller marks which is very frustrating i really like that i like my prints to have a good weight to them and these ones are lovely they just they are more um well they are lovely so look those two have printed out like this and they look they look really nice see can you see the satin sort of sheen on them so yes, once again, if you are an artist, it's definitely worth checking out Marit's papers because they're just fantastic. Right, so we had the 265 printed really well. That was the Pro, Pro Photo Satin. The 250 Smooth Luster printed well. The 280's got the roller marks. The 300 card that we tried has got the roller marks and the 260 sort of photo papers got the roller marks but admittedly that is a cheaper paper than the marat one is so approaching 300 gsm the better quality paper is still getting the roller marks so for the higher end thickness 
the quality of the paper isn't making a difference. Whether when I get the Epsom paper, that's a different story. We'll have to wait and see. But this is good, very, very good quality paper. So, as I said, I've got roller marks in all my pieces of paper here. I can, however, still print using this printer and not get any roller marks, but I can't do it this way. So I'm going to show you exactly what I have to do in order to be able to then print onto thicker paper. First of all, I'm going to shut the output tray because we need our little device to be nice and compact again now. And I'm going to shut this down and put that in. So the flaff is that I now need to turn my printer around. I haven't actually done this while it's in this new space because I'm not intending to be doing this anymore. Yes, I now need more room. I need my heat press to not be here so that I've got even more room for my printer. And again, this is something you are going back to the very start of this video, something you absolutely need to take into account when it comes to the space for your printer. My space is not made up or set up for me to be turning this around on a regular basis. So you just have to bear with me for a minute. So, first of all, we have to open this. And then we have to pull the rear, pull, pull that paper guide thing back up out of the way again. And all will become clear. Now, can you see these grey things here? We need to pull this off of this printer now. So there's two little grey things. You just literally push them in and pull. And that takes this mechanism out of the printer. Now we need this piece of it. And it comes off just by pulling... She says I need to put it down really and put it down here so it just comes off like that all right and we need this piece so this can now go to one side and this slots in just inside the printer here you'll see there's two little these pieces here on the side fit into two holes one's there one's there so that slots in like that. And now we have a paper feeder guide. Just putting my printer back a bit because as you know, the output tray is gonna come out when I select print. And I'm sorry you can't see it, but I have had to turn my printer around the other way to do this. So let's get that 300 GSM card again. Get this paper's cuts one, 300 GSM. Before you put the paper into the machine, you have to select the item that's going to be printed. So we'll go back to the greetings cards for this. So to print using the back of the printer, the rear fade paper, rear paper feed slot, we have to select what we want to print, go to options, printer properties. And here we have a section. So this is for the feeder at the back of the top of the machine and to print at the back in the new slot that I've just shown you. It's the rear paper feed slot. So before we do anything, we have to send our print job first, then load the paper. So do not load the paper into the back of the machine until you are told to do so by the computer. So click OK. But then it comes up with this box and it says when loading paper from the rear paper feed slot, 20 millimeter margins will appear at the bottom of the printout. So we know that we click OK and we select OK, and then we press print. So the 20 millimetre margin that it just told you you were going to get. We've got a situation now whereby we've had to do all of this in order to prick on, print onto the thicker paper. And not only that, we also, when we are making our designs, have to take into account that a 20 millimetre margin is going to appear at the bottom of the paper. And I will show you what that looks like in a minute. The output tray has come out. I couldn't show you that because the printer is facing the wall and I can't get the camera in there to show you. So... The, print, the output tray has come out in readiness to receive this and now we can in fact load the paper and this all happens automatically now so you start loading the paper in and you feel the machine take the paper off you so you just sort of feed it in as such then it gets to a stage where it won't take it anymore and then the printer grabs hold of the paper so it will take it in a bit, it will bring it out a bit, and then it will start printing. So now it's going to print on the cardstock and we shall see what it looks like when it comes out. That 20 millimetre margin for me, say I decided that that card that I really liked, this, 
the 280 GSM, not very thick, remember? If I decided that I wanted to do all my prints with this, because I just really, and I do really like how this is looking. It's got a lovely sheen to it, but it's subtle and I really like this. And if I could print normally using this, I think I'd be changing my paper, card, paper over to this. If I decided that I did want to change my paper over, I would have to be doing it this way. Suddenly, I'm going to have issues with my margins. And not only that, printing ain't going to be much fun because obviously you're feeding them through one at a time. Every time you send a print job, you've got to wait for the printer to do its thing. And it will tell, you know, because it said don't load the paper. So then you've got to feed it through. Printing onto this would be an absolute faff for me. And in terms of my time and how efficient I could be, well, it ain't going to be doing me any favours. This is still printing and it's coming out the front. Right, that's printed. But there are no roller marks now. So that's printed fine, but the roller marks are gone. Now, let's find the greeting card from before when we printed on this card stock. This is the initial one, slight border here. Now we've printed it through this back of the printer. We don't have the roller marks. We do have a ridiculous margin. So one solution has been resolved. Another one has been added, shall we say. So I don't know about you. I will. I'm going to try this other paper as well, just to see. Seeing as we tested them first, this isn't the Marat. This is the initial one, the initial glossy one we taste tested that had roller marks. So let's send that through. Oh, it's going to tell me to wait a minute before I put it in. Got to not load paper. So this is what. So it's telling me not to load paper. And in a minute, it will say that I can load the paper. Now I can. So again, you just feed it through till they feel the end and then it will take care of the rest. It's nice to know that the print, the roller marks have now gone on the 300 GSM. So I clearly can print on thicker cardstock now. But like I've said, we have a ridiculously big margin to now contend with. Uh, this is going to come out any minute now and we better check it. But yeah, I must say, and I, I don't, in no way is there any advertising in this video. I'm not getting paid for anything. My channel simply isn't big enough for that. And I know I've told you about the Marat papers quite often. So don't think that I'm going to be paid for it. It's not sponsored or anything. It's not affiliate links or anything like that. But I just am so impressed with their papers and very worth checking out. That is the name of them right there but I don't get any sort of payment for mentioning Marat many times on my channel. It's just simply a company that I found that I appreciate and you know why not spread the word around. Right well interestingly enough that has come out with roller marks <laughs> so even printing this one through the back of the paper of a printer is no good. Um, so that could just be the actual paper is naff. I've even got this on the bottom of this so I think what I would do is just not bother using this paper at all anyway now because um, in fairness and to provide a you know as accurate as I can um, experience that I'm having I would say that if this has also gone through the back and it's got roller marks it's probably an issue with the paper so I'm not going to use this paper anymore not that I do use it for anything I, it was something I got um just for doing stuff ages ago, nothing for my business because I don't I don't make stuff for that. 300 GSM was what I made my cards with and I had to do it through the back of the printer like this when I was making them for myself because through the back of the printer it works fine. To put it back all back together again you simply take the grey piece back off of there. I mean the thing is as well obviously when you're taking this apart you've got to be very careful because if you accidentally drop this or something, I should imagine a good bit of damage would be done. Um, you put it back in, so if you can see the triangles here, that sort of just hooks under there, and then you just push it back into place. And then you take hold of these grey things again, push them back in, and then that slots back into the machine. The same way. She says, oh, this has got to go up out of the way. This needs to be up out of the way because it, otherwise it hangs down. You can't get this in. So that just slots back in like that. Put your paper feeder guide back down. Shut everything up. And then turn your printer back around. But make sure the output tray is in. Otherwise, 
you're gonna have a whole heap of other problems to contend with so that's that you've just seen the rear paper feed slot obviously you also have the rear paper feeder here you also have under here a tray that comes out which you can put paper in as well i only keep like a4 plain paper in here that's the only thing i print from here everything else i now print through there you can also print cds uh, envelopes a whole heap of other things on this printer all of which i won't be doing so i can't tell you about all of that because i have no experience with it right well that seemed to be a very long um video on that section of things but it is something i wanted to bring up because that's been my experience with this printer and and that is a fault that if i'd known perhaps that it couldn't it had issues printing through here with roller marks um that would have been something i seriously would have thought about long and hard before purchasing this. I probably would have looked at alternatives. I think I was looking at the P700 at one point, which I think was more money if I remember rightly. And that was the pigment inks and it was a choice between the two. But I ended up, because I knew the dye-based inks could last sort of 50 odd years. And to be fair, I did right back in the day when I put this set, this printer up, I printed a picture of Westwood Ho. And I left it in full view, like right in my window for three months. Uh, just to test it, because obviously if you hang art prints or artwork in front of windows where the direct sunlight is on it, then you have to accept that your colours may start fading. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but that's one of the chances you take if you hang artwork in direct sunlight. I purposely left a Westwood Ho print and I wish I still had it, but I haven't purposely left a Westwood Ho print in my window in full UV light, sunny days, rainy days, whatever. I didn't move it for three months and the colours didn't fade. And I did that just to satisfy myself that my art prints would be all right. Obviously, I haven't tested it for 50 years, but the fact that it showed no fading after three full months in UV light um, and direct sunlight satisfies the fact that, again, for this, for 15 quid, I think people are getting as best quality in art print as I can give them. So what else is there to say? I suppose all that's really left is for, for me to sum up. In terms of print quality for this printer, I honestly give it 10 out of 10 because as yet I've had absolutely no issues. It prints brilliantly every single time. I am absolutely thrilled with it and chuffed to bits whether I'm doing the stickers, the quality of those, fantastic. The art prints are fantastic everything's good everything that i needed to do is good in terms of the reasons i bought the printer was to do the small business and use it for all the options that i was going to that were open to me including greetings cards obviously it's been a bit, big disappointment as far as that goes even in terms of this 280 that i've just printed off i mean i honestly look at that and think i would really love to do my prints on this and change over from the 230 that i currently use but I can't because of the roller marks and I'm certainly not going to be turning that round every day. Not unless those indentations do in fact pop out after a couple of weeks, in which case I might consider it. But I don't know if I'd be happy with that. I don't know. I don't know. But as of right now, how things start stand, I couldn't buy this paper and change over to it because I get the indentations through this top feeder, which is a real shame. So in terms of that then what would I give the printer? I suppose about seven out of 10 really, because that is a big part of it for me. Still good with the printing, ease of use, the inks, everything else, the, the cost of the inks, fantastic. But that's that's a big, you know, the fact that I cannot just say, cool, I like that and I'd like to start using that now is quite a big deal. So I think seven out of 10 in terms of it for my business. So there's a lot more pros than there are cons in there. And certainly if you're not planning on doing greetings cards for your business, well, then it's very well worth considering because as I said, I haven't tested Epsom papers yet and I am going to do that, but I don't feel like I should have to use Epsom printers in order for me to, to use this machine. And obviously I don't, I use Mara, but 
if all Epson printers are absolutely fine running through here, then why are not all papers fine running through here? Not the cheap ones, I understand, but you know, Marit, like I say, is uh, is a very good quality of paper. So it's not 300 GSM. It, that the Epson tells you that the top feeder should handle anything up to 300 GSM. Is well, fine, and it didn't. And yes, I know some people will say it's not the GSM, it's the thickness. But like I say, that is not thick. Well, it's not that thick. I don't consider that to be thick card. Anyway, there we are. So the pros outweigh the cons, but the con is quite a big one. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it here. And thank you if you made it right the way through to the end of this video. And well done. <laughs> I hope it's all come across quite well. And that's it for the printer for the moment. If I get the update and all things change and the roller marks go, yes, I should contact Epson because, you know, in, well, it's one of those. I could contact Epson and complain about machine and receive a new machine and it have the same problem, bearing in mind a lot of people have had this problem. But in the meantime, I've got a small business to run and I need my printer to be making art prints. And in terms of my art prints, it's printing fine. So I don't know that that's a whole heap of hassle that I'm ready for because it could slow everything up for me and, and prevent another problem, which is sort of why I've put off contacting them, I think. Definitely will try the Epson paper at some point. But like I say, if anything happens that resolves this and the, I get this update that people have talked about and it sorts my problems out, whether I will be very quickly on here to let you all know about it. Until then, I will leave it here. Thank you very much for watching and take care. And if you do purchase one of these i hope you enjoy it and yeah love the print quality as much as i do so yes all right then i think that's it i'll talk to you soon take care bye over and out